I am Kylie Lundahl. These are my associates, Rennie Murez and Nayi Murez. The movements that you are about to see have been taken directly from other movements, which shamans, seers who lived in Mexico in ancient times, used to call magical passes. Everything we know about those movements was taught to Carlos Castaneda, Taisha Abelar, Florinda Donner Grau, and Carol Teagues by Don Juan Matus, a Yaqui Indian shaman from the state of Sonora, Mexico. Don Juan's four disciples, in turn, taught the three of us everything they know about those magical passes. The seers of ancient Mexico performed these passes in order to condition their bodies and minds for activities pertinent to shamanism. Shamanism was understood by them as the acquired capacity to expand the limits of our normal perception. The peculiarity of the magical passes, which is most meaningful to us, is that by practicing them, one can become aware of some cohesive force that binds together the conglomerate of energy fields that we are. This binding effect is something similar to what modern day astronomers believe happens at the core of every galaxy that exists in the cosmos. They believe that at that core, a force of incalculable strength holds the stars of galaxies in place. This force, called a black hole, is a theoretical construct which seems to be the most reasonable explanation of why stars do not fly away, driven by their own rotational speeds. Likewise, the conglomerate of energy fields that we are is kept in place cohesively by a tremendous binding force without which, seers believe, we would explode from within and vanish like a puff of air. The seers of antiquity were capable of handling that force once they became conscious of it. Their expertise in dealing with it became so extraordinary that their actions were transformed into legends, mythological events that could only exist as fables. After years of hard work and dedication, the three of us, guided by Don Juan's four disciples, were able to rescue the magical passes from their esoteric setting and adapt them to more conventional surroundings. The result of this restoration process we have called tensegrity, which to us is the art of using the magical passes for the purpose of becoming conscious of the binding force which holds a human being together as a concrete unit. In our first volume, 12 Basic Movements to Gather Energy and Promote Well-Being, we dealt with complete magical passes and with fragments of magical passes, which were used to arrive at a minimal awareness of what seers believe is the counterpart of our body. They call it the energy body. Seers argue that we can learn to perceive energy directly as it flows in the universe, and that when we do this, we are capable of perceiving a human being as a conglomerate of energy fields that resembles a luminous sphere. The energy body is an identical luminous sphere which exists at a very great distance from us. Seers maintain that we are not complete until the energy body is with us and that through performing the magical passes, we can bring the two closer to each other. In this volume, we are going to deal with the utilization of internal energy that has been dispersed by the wear and tear of daily living from the core of the luminous sphere to the periphery of it. To make use of our own energy that is normally inaccessible to us is considered by the seers to be the most important step towards well-being and completion. Intent!
With our first magical pass, a structure made out of energy, we aim at creating a structure in our immediate energy horizon. Seers give the name of energy horizon to the energy fields which are immediately adjacent to us when we are perceived as luminous spheres. This magical pass is basic, seers say, because it creates a dwelling, so to speak, for the energy body. Their idea is that our energy bodies have been separated from us at birth and pushed away by antagonistic forces. By creating a magical, energetic dwelling, seers believe we put out the invitation for the energy body to come closer to us. The emphasis of this first magical pass is on the area of the kidneys and adrenals. By making the body stoop slightly forward, we create the adequate pressure on that area. Then the body is brought to a vertical position with the upper chest fully extended, the back straight, the eyes looking onward fiercely. The eyes are always kept looking to the front with as much fierceness as possible. Seers say that the eyes must reveal our unbending intent. The next movement brings even greater pressure to the adrenal area because the arms shoot out in front, bent at the elbows with tremendous force. The greater the force, the greater the effect on the adrenal area. The trunk straightens up when the arms are raised above the shoulders as if carrying a tray. The palms are then turned over with great force. The hands cross over one another and the arms are extended laterally. The hands are brought down then and pressure is brought to bear again on the adrenals by stooping the trunk slightly and bending the knees. The magical pass is closed with a quick lateral movement of both arms. Intent! Our second magical pass, the seer's window, is performed to create an energetic opening to the outside of the luminous egg. Seers maintain that by executing this magical pass, we are actually capable of manufacturing, so to speak, a momentary opening for peering into infinity. This opening, seers maintain, is of crucial value for establishing contact with the force that sustains our lives and gives us nurturance, purpose, vitality, name it, a force seers call intent. Upon creating this opening, seers yell the word intent, which they say is laid as a bridge from a human being over infinity to intent. Intent! The hands come together gently at the center of the body. The thumbs are held firmly over the palm and only the edges of the hands touch. Next, both hands are moved to the sides as if touching a flat surface that extends to the end of the arm's aperture and closes again to the center of the body. The left arm does the same movement alone while the right one is kept at the same level at the middle of the body. The same movement is executed with the right hand the hands are then moved from the center until they are the width of the body apart, held in a vertical position with the palms facing each other. The left palm moves as if feeling the exterior edge of a window frame. Then the right hand does the same thing. The left hand moves in an arc, pivoting on the elbow to the interior edge of the invisible window frame. It moves upward and downward once. The right hand does the same movement. 
Then both hands are raised above the head with the palms facing the sky. The hands come together at their inner edges and both are extended to the sides as if tracing the interior upper edge of a window frame. They are held in the center point again and the left hand performs the same movement, then the right hand. When both hands are joined together again, the hands draw a small circle until the palms are down and as if resting on an invisible window sill. The upper trunk stoops forward, holding the kidney area as the pivoting center, as if one were peering through a window and the word intent is shouted. Immediately afterwards, a step back is quickly taken. Intent! Intent. The third magical pass, rallying dispersed energy, is performed in order to rally the energy that has been dispersed by the wear and tear of interaction in daily life. This rallying gets us from a lethargic state to one of great alertness. Rallying dispersed energy means to move it by making it rotate in order to place it on a projection of the solar plexus, which is situated an arm's length in front of us on the periphery of the luminous sphere. Seers believe that storing energy there is the surest way to make it available at a moment's notice. Both hands are brought together with great force over the right shoulder with the left hand on top of the right. Then they are brought diagonally across the body as if one is holding an invisible axe to the area above the left knee. Dispersed energy is stirred with a round counterclockwise movement of both hands held together. Both hands clasped together are pulled back to the area of the liver and gallbladder, and then they are shot out to the point directly in front of the solar plexus. Notice that the arms strike out with the knuckles of the right hand in the gesture of delivering a blow. The fourth magical pass, called piercing the two columns of energy, rallies dispersed energy by deliberately poking it at centers that seers consider to be key spots. In other words, the dispersion of energy to the periphery of the luminous sphere results in the formation of definite pockets of energy which seers poke in order to allow it to diffuse and be rallied more easily. Poking is not done with the hand, although the hands and the arms are used but it is done with an energy we call tendon energy, for lack of a better name, which streams out of the limbs when they are projected out with sufficient force.
The fourth magical pass begins with a vibratory movement of both hands, a vibration generating from the axis of the forearm. The left arm turns in front of the body, stirring dispersed energy, and then pokes high into the column of energy to the right of the body, a column that seers say resembles the drippings of a candle. The right hand moves backwards in order to allow the left hand a maximum explosion of tendon energy. The left arm rotates backwards one and a half times in the opposite direction and pokes low at the same column of dispersed energy. The same movements are repeated with the right arm, poking high and low at the other column of dispersed energy on the left side that looks like the one on the right. The right hand with the fingers pointing to the ground draws a circle around the body from the left to right, followed by the left one. Then the left hand draws the same circle, followed by the right hand. The right forearm rolls the ball from top to bottom, followed by the left hand. Both hands hold the ball of energy on the solar plexus and first push it in, then pull it out forcefully and push it onto the projection of the solar plexus on the outer edge of the luminous sphere. The seer's idea that sustains our particular series of magical passes is that through the effects of daily life, our internal energy, which is amassed around the area of the kidneys and adrenals, is dispersed to the periphery of our luminous spheres. This dispersion does not mean in any way a loss of energy, but rather a loss of our facility to gain access to it. The fifth magical pass, awakening the center of feeling, has to do with the deliberate calling of the dispersed energy on the periphery of the luminous sphere in order to bring it to a specific center of feeling, a center located on the left side, right above the edge of the rib cage, at the height of the upper tip of the pancreas and spleen, a spot which seers believe is the epicenter of feelings. With this movement, we are preparing the bond of indisputable affection that must exist between the body that we know and the energy body that we don't know, but which every one of us intuits. In our fifth magical pass, we keep the knees slightly bent in order to allow the body stability. The hands join in a forceful, yet very controlled movement. They come together and pierce the dispersed energy accumulated right in front of us. They rip it upwards and they turn it clockwise to stir it. The hands come down to the midsection to the stomach level. Then they are turned over with the right hand on the top. They cut upwards in a ripping movement, and then they are brought to the area of the pancreas and spleen. From there, the hands push out to the sides, and they rip what seers consider to be the heaviest concentration of dispersed energy, the energy that accumulates next to the left and right sides of the body. Seers refer to that concentration as columns of wasted energy that give the impression of the dried up drippings of gigantic candles. The hands are brought again to the center of the body. They rip upwards. They stir the energy once again in a clockwise direction and are brought once more to the pancreas and spleen areas and then they are projected out to the front of the body.
Our sixth pass, transferring energy to the assemblage point, deals with the transfer of dispersed energy from a frontal area to the back in order for this force to serve as a crutch for the assemblage point. When seers perceive human beings as luminous spheres, it becomes evident to them that there exists on the already luminous sphere a spot of even more intense luminosity, the size of a tennis ball, habitually located at the height of the shoulder blades and arm's length behind them. Seers are thoroughly satisfied with their conclusion that it is there, on that spot, that perception is assembled, and that is why they call that spot the assemblage point. By deliberately displacing the assemblage point to another place away from its habitual position, seers did prove to themselves that it is there that perception is assembled. The end result of this maneuver is the perception of a world that is quite different than the world of daily affairs. Seers have explained this difference by their observation that when the assemblage point is on its habitual position, billions of energy fields from the universe at large converge there, giving as a result the world we know. But when the assemblage point is displaced to another location on the periphery or the inside of the luminous sphere, other sets of billions of energy fields that resemble luminous fibers converge there, giving as a result the perception of another world. Transferring energy from the front to the back, seers believe, solidifies the position of the assemblage point in all of us, especially in the case of extremely sensitive persons whose assemblage point shifts erratically and who are incapable of disciplining themselves. As they gain more awareness, however, the same energy that served as a crutch serves as a factor that expedites the peaceful and deliberate displacement of the assemblage point. The magical passes are always begun with the left arm. The reason for us is that the left side of the body is always lagging behind the right one in terms of prowess and dexterity. For the seers of antiquity, the reason was that we are inexorably heading for a bilateral dissymmetry. The left body is being unavoidably shrunk by the right one if we do not engage our conscious effort to balance this. This pass, transferring energy to the assemblage point, begins by raising the left arm with the palm facing the ground. The palm turns sharply upwards as the elbow is pulled backwards. Next, the left arm shoots out with the palm facing upwards and the wrist held immobile as straight as possible, keeping the elbow bent. The left forearm is raised to the level of the eyes as if it were a mirror in which we can see ourselves. We stare at the palm of the hand for a moment, then the hand closes into a fist that pivots 45 degrees to the right. The elbow is raised until the upper arm is parallel to the ground and the fist points downward, still twisted at an angle. The right hand is then placed over the left shoulder as a support or a buttress of sorts, while the left arm pivots as it is twisted until the fist reaches the area of the right adrenals. At the count of three, the right hand dislodges itself from the shoulder, and in an elegant arc, it moves to the front of the body, while the left arm straightens and joins the right at the same height, and they are both retrieved to the sides of the body. The exact same movements are repeated with the right side of the body.
Our seventh magical pass, bringing energy down from above the head to three different areas on the front part of the body, brings dispersed energy from the top of the luminous sphere to three areas on the body, the chest, the stomach area, and the groin. Seers say that this is the most direct way to arrive at a quick charge of energy. Energy that has been dispersed to the area just above the head is, according to Sears, an extremely active, extremely aggressive energy. Or rather, the fact that energy from other parts of the luminous sphere has been transferred to the area above the head makes that energy extra volatile, highly charged. To place that energy on those three areas of the body, Sears say, ensures a quick and effective reaction on our part. This movement, bringing energy down from above the head to three different areas on the front part of the body, begins with the raising of both hands with the arms stretched downward. Then the forearms are raised at the elbow until the hands are almost touching the shoulders. The index finger and thumb are kept extended while the other fingers are bent, nearly touching the palm. All the air from the lungs is exhaled and a deep breath is taken while the left arm extends totally in front of the body and the right arm bent at the elbow is thrust backwards. A full extension of the shoulders is obtained in this manner. All the air is exhaled then as the left arm is retrieved all the way to the back and the right arm is extended fully onward. Another breath is taken while the right arm is retrieved to the shoulder and the left one is pushed to the same level. With both arms at the level of the shoulders, the left arm is extended straight upwards with the index finger pointing to the zenith. All the air of the lungs is expelled at this point. An inhalation is taken as the arm is lowered to the shoulder. The exact movement is repeated with the right hand. Then all of the fingers are extended upwards. The left arm shoots up again as the fingers point to the zenith. All the air in the lungs is exhaled. The fingers curl as if grabbing a handle, and a deep inhalation is taken as the arm is pulled downward until the hand, still holding an invisible handle, is lowered to the level of the shoulder. The same movement is executed with the right arm. And when both hands are held together at the same level, the air inhaled with the last movement is held in the lungs while the left and right hands come together twice as if mixing a paste. The hands slide over the breasts with a deep exhalation. The hands move to the midsection, fingers touching. A deep inhalation is taken. Then the hands slide over the midsection from the center to the sides of the body as all the air is exhaled from the lungs. The hands go to the groin area, fingertips touching. Another inhalation is taken. And then the hands slide over the groin to the hips as all the air is once again expelled from the lungs. Notice that the elbows are kept pulled backwards and the chest is fully extended.
Our eighth pass is called pulling and wrapping the internal fibers of energy. Seers support the idea that the totality of the universe is composed of energy fields that could be described almost in a visual sense as resembling luminous threads of infinite length. Seers say that such energy fields can never be broken, that they could only be stretched and bent. With this rather complex magical pass, Seers aim at pulling and stretching thread-like energy fields that exist inside the luminous sphere in order to buttress areas which they consider to be essential for withstanding the redirection of dispersed energy, such as the areas around the shoulder blades and the shoulders where ganglia are heavily concentrated. Another area of equal value is the area of the knees and ankles on which all the physical support of the body rests. First, both arms are raised as if they were holding two thin vertical fibers. The left arm is placed on the right shoulder, and the right arm is immediately placed behind on the right adrenal. Notice that both hands must be kept as if they are pulling two invisible vertical cords. The first is a tug onward, and the other one is a backward tug that counterbalances the first one. A deep breath is taken with the first, and an exhalation is made on the second. Then the left hand wraps the invisible cord around the back of the neck and comes down to rest on the area of the pancreas and the spleen. Then the right hand wraps the invisible cord around the back of the neck and comes to stop at the left clavicle. The back of the left fist touches the left adrenal and the same movement of tugging forward with an inhalation and pulling backwards with an exhalation is done. The right fist holding the invisible cord moves around the back of the neck and comes to rest over the liver and gallbladder. The left fist and its invisible cord wrap around the back of the neck from the left to the right and come to rest over the pancreas and spleen. The arms are brought down and the forearms are raised again, holding another set of invisible vertical cords. And the same movements are performed again, starting with the right arm pulling the invisible cord that goes over the left shoulder to the adrenals. When the full movements have been repeated and the fists are held over the pancreas and liver, they are pulled forward to the initial beginning position. The right leg is raised with a bent knee and the invisible cord is tied over the knee once from the outside to the inside of the leg, one more time from the inside to the outside of the foot, and it ends with a final turn from the inside to the outside of the raised knee. The right hand is held in the initial position of this movement, while the left ties the invisible cord on the left knee in a mere image of what was done with the right leg. When the clenched hands are in the initial position, they are brought together over the solar plexus, forcefully interlocking the knuckles and creating a pressure in the hands over the solar plexus. A deep breath is taken. The pass ends by exhaling and bringing the open hands to the sides with the palms up.
Our last magical pass, called the Stellar Hatch, is the final stage of our energy manipulation. A seer's belief is that our basic energy cannot be diminished or augmented. It can only be transferred from one area to another. One of the most remarkable accomplishments of the seers who lived in Mexico in ancient times was that they found methods to stir all the energy accumulated on the periphery of the luminous sphere. This statement examined in light of our logic or reasonableness of everyday life is nonsensical, but it wasn't nonsensical for the seers in question. They claimed that by opening themselves to the influence of the energy from the stars, they were creating a condition by which external forces bore on them. Their energy was not increased in any measure by external forces, but those external forces exerted a specific pressure on the periphery of their luminous spheres, a pressure that was translated into stirring to the maximum their dispersed energy crusted through the years on that periphery and rendering it ready for energetic manipulation. Buttressing the body to withstand the effect of this redistribution is to seers something of key importance, hence the value of our preceding magical pass, which achieves this purpose. This movement is begun by looking down as if one were perched in a high place, looking at a spot on the ground located between the feet, many stories below. The hands are kept at the sides of the body. The eyes begin to pull up an invisible clump of energy, perhaps the size of a tennis ball. It is raised to the chest at the level of the chin. The head is kept lowered with the chin to the chest. The invisible ball of energy is held at that position on the chest by a jutting movement of the head. Then it is taken by the chin, raised to the level of the eyes, and the eyes push it to the zenith as the head moves backward. Once that ball of energy is held to the zenith, the arms proceed to cut an opening in the energy ceiling above the head. The left arm moves with the edge of the hand like a knife and cuts an opening. The right hand is pushed downward at the same time to help create a slicing force. The left hand moves down as the right hand is raised to produce the same cutting effect. Then the left hand is raised and both hands go through the slits in the energy. Next the right hand moves back as the left hand moves to the front in a circular motion, propelled by a twisting of the torso. This is completed by the movement of the right hand to the front and the left hand to the back. In this manner, a hatch is opened in the energetic ceiling. The lid to that hatch is lowered and comes to rest on the chest. The ball of energy then shoots out, pushed by the eyes through the opening into infinity. Three seconds are counted for the ball to reach its destination. And three seconds more are counted until it returns and lands with an impact on the back of the neck. Air is inhaled as the shoulders are lifted and an exhalation is made as the shoulders drop. Then the lid is picked up from the chest, placed back in its position, and the opening is sealed by moving the hands and the torso from right to left, and then left to right, and then to the center. The next movement is to lower the hands to the sides of the body. The ball of energy that is held on the back of the neck is unhooked by pushing it forward. This is done with another jutting movement of the head. Then the ball drops all the way down to its original position on the ground several stories below. A count of three seconds is taken. Then a deep inhalation is taken by raising the shoulders and the tops of the lungs as the arms with the hands bent at the wrists extend outward from the sides of the body, creating a pressure behind the ears that gives the sensation of breathing through gills. This is followed by an exhalation and the arms come back to the sides of the body.
Intent! Intent.